Welcome to Voice of the Inland Empire, your weekly adventure into the who, what, where, and why of our Southern California communities. And we are coming to you from Charlie Stars and Stripes in historic Old Town Upland, where today we will be meeting Bob Uloa, who is the owner of Bob's Record Shack. And Vinyl Folks is coming back. And if you want to learn how and why you should be listening and maybe getting rid of some of that digital stuff, then don't go away. We will be right back. Charlie's Stars and Stripes in Old Town Upland is one of my favorite places to go for food, for drink, and for great entertainment. Located at 296 2nd Street in Old Town Upland, just north of the gazebo and just east of Euclid Avenue. This is a wonderful place with a broad menu variety great drinks, great fun, and marvelous people. They have weekly specials. These are my favorites. Check out their Monday night $5.99 steak dinner. How can you go wrong? They have specials virtually every night of the week. And then they have entertainment going on all the time, from trivia contests to karaoke to dancing to some of the best cover bands you'll ever hear on Fridays and Saturday nights. Check them out on Yelp. Check them out on Facebook or come on by and say you heard about them on Voice of the Inland Empire. I love it so much here. This is where we're shooting the show. Right here from the bar at Charlie's Stars and Stripes in Old Town Upland. Come on by. Any evening, who knows, you may just see me here having dinner and a drink. It is that time of the show when we say hello to today's guest. And this is a gentleman that I've been looking forward to chatting with. A Bob Uloa from Bob's Record Shack. And Bob, I'm starting to see more and more places selling vinyl. What, what gives with that? Is vinyl coming back? Yes, it is. And yeah. if you tell me eight tracks are coming back, I may have to hurt you. Yeah, I got eight tracks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I believe you do, and probably cassettes as well. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I've been by your store, um, you know, on the weekends, and sometimes when they have the festivals, because you're right here in historic Old Town Upland. In fact, you're right behind uh, Scavenger's Treasures, mm -hmm. uh, right off of 2nd Street, just north of 9th. And there's a lot of people. And they're, they're going through the boxes. And I get this sense they're looking for some of their old favorites. Yeah. Oh, yes. And even their children. They listen to, growing up listening to them. They, they want them to. So why are people going back to, to vinyl? Well, I, I, I thank MP3 for that. Because this is the sound. The, the sound that they have nowadays went digital compared to analog sound, which is on the vinyl. And the digital sound... It took a little bit away, but when it went to MP3, it compressed it. Even where, more. Even more to where you don't hear what the band uh, recorded in the studio, what they wanted you to hear. It's, a lot of it's lost. Now, there are some people, and I'm not one of them, that would argue with that and say, well, you don't have the right speakers, or you don't have, the good, you don't have good enough equipment. It's their opinion. You know, everybody has their own taste in music, and I happen to like vinyl. Um, I know uh, there's other people like me, and that's the people I cater to, because it's, it's an experience. So you have a clean piece of vinyl, and you have a really good stereo system, it's an experience to sit down and listen to it, listen to that music on vinyl. And I enjoy it, and, and um, I, I enjoy uh, selling to, and, and, and uh, entertaining other people that enjoy that with me. So. And when you think about it, the digital, really at the end of the day, it's just zeros and ones. 
Whereas I think you, you get a warmth and it's almost like the difference between reading a, a newspaper, a magazine, or a book that you touch, hold, and feel versus reading it on your tablet. Right. It's just a whole different experience oh, with yeah. vinyl. Yeah. But now, and this may be a dumb question, are bands today still producing vinyl or is everything digital? This bands today have gone back to cassettes. Because what? that's Yeah, because that's an analog sound which they can record on. CDs is digital, and they, you, you, they, you lose a little bit uh, with, with, uh, with um, digital. And so a lot of the uh, cassettes are coming back, you know, the bands that record and they want to get their music out there, they put it on cassettes and distribute their cassettes at their shows. So I'm going to have to dig out some of my old cassette players. Yeah, yeah, you'd be surprised. I had my CD player break in my car, went out, and I said, okay, okay I have some cassettes in the garage somewhere, I found them, and I put a cassette in and I haven't I hadn't heard a cassette in years and I was surprised th how good the sound was I go how why did we go to CDs it's the analog sound on tape right cuz on on tape for me at least the older tape I mean there's tape that you can record digitally but the older tape is still an analog sound yes but then you've got to stick the pen and wind the thing well, and, and the small, tape stretches and, small price yeah small price yeah I had someone come in yeah, but, but he's, he, was, he swore by his digital. He wanted to get an argument with me, but I, you know, hey, that's your opinion. I have yeah, opinion. it's what you like. And he's, one of the things was he said that, he goes, yeah, but you know, I can sit on the couch and I don't have to get up and, and turn the record over. Okay, that's fine. I don't mind getting up and turning the record over. It's a small price it's, to and pay. And it's part of that experience. Yeah, yeah. And that's what makes it fun. Yeah. So obviously then, if bands today aren't producing anything on vinyl, you've only got older stuff. Is it still in production, or do you just go out and find people that are, how do you come across what you sell? Oh, that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a job, um, finding used vinyl. Because if you go into Barnes & Noble, they have, new, they have new vinyl, you know. That are remakes yes. of old music. But, actually, but, all, but really what it is, it's like an oversized CD because that, that recording they're using is digital. And, and then the they're just putting it onto the vinyl. Yeah, so um, finding old vinyl, that's, that's the job. It's out there. Um, I've been fortunate. I've had people come and sell me some good collections, so I have good stuff to offer. Yeah, because I've been in there. You've got just bin after bin after bin full. So what is most popular when people come into your store? Well, Beatles. Okay. Beatles are um, Led Zeppelin, uh, Rolling Stones, and... Um, a lot of it, a lot of a lot of people are looking for the old the well, the eighties the punk okay and that's hard to find because there wasn't much put out and the people that have it they don't they're not letting it go it. no no and vinyl is is hard to store long term because I I imagine you come across a lot of it that's it, the heat it's warped it's scratched yes and isn't that that high quality that you need so I'm guessing there's a lot of garbage out there there is not a lot of good stuff I got out quite there. a bit in my garage yes you know I, you have to take the good with the bad when you buy collections and unfortunately yeah there's there's um, some vinyl that the covers are beat but the vinyl's good and vice versa and you know it's just that um, if you find where the covers are really nice and the vinyls really good you got a gem yeah Sometimes some people they're not worried about what the what the cover looks like. They just want that good vinyl that sounds good when they put it on their, on their turntable. So I have some of that available too. And is it is vinyl expensive? I mean, is it selling at like antique prices or? or it, it it varies anywhere from a dollar up to a hundred dollars. It just depends on the artist title and you know how much is how much is available out there. I came across this album um, from this collection I bought. And it was a, a, a group I never heard of. I thought, well, I'm going to put this in the dollar bin, you know? And I'm lucky I didn't because I looked it up and it was an album where only 250 copies were. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so it's important, you know, to, to, to research what you have. And, um, and it's, I played it and it's like, it was like a heavy metal punk. And I, I had no idea because it, it was a blue vinyl and only one side had songs on it. Only one side? Yeah, the other side was wow. blank. So it was, it was a fun find. And that's, that's another thing about uh, the, the older vinyl, finding the, the good stuff like that. Now, is the vinyl today, are, are, do you just sell 33s or do you, I remember the old 45s. You know, I have some friends 
that are very knowledgeable. About, I just dated myself, didn't I? About yes. Yeah, I did. Okay, never mind. Oh, that's good. My yeah, my yeah, my first record was a forty-five. There you go. It was by the Archies, Sugar Sugar. I remember oh, it well. God, I remember that. <laughs> but uh, I have friends that that's all they specialize is forty-fives. A lot of DJ friends, and uh, they can look at a, at a label and they can tell you exactly what kind of of uh, genre of music it is, and it's 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 pretty impressive. I don't have that knowledge for forty-fives. I'm learning about 33 still, so I stick to 33s. All right, well, we're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, I wanna talk more about the range of music you offer, and what do I play it on? Okay. Obviously, I don't have a turntable, so I'm gonna be looking for some advice there as well. But in the meantime, if someone wants more information, website, phone number? Uh, you can follow me on Facebook. My, my phone number is um, area code 909-551-6766. And I'm on Facebook, Bob's Record Shack group page. And on that, you can follow me with all my latest, I post all my latest new arrivals, where I'm gonna be at, you know, I'm not the shop, like I'm doing you know, um, sales here and there. So it, it's, it's, it's pretty informative, and I, I highly uh, re, um, suggest you follow me on that. Right. We're gonna take a quick break, but the best part of this conversation is yet to come. Don't go away. Charlie's Stars and Stripes in Old Town Upland is one of my favorite places to go for food, for drink, and for great entertainment. Located at 296 2nd Street in Old Town Upland, just north of the gazebo and just east of Euclid Avenue. This is a wonderful place with a broad menu, variety, great drinks, great fun, and marvelous people. They have weekly specials. These are my favorites. Check out their Monday night $5.99 steak dinner. How can you go wrong? They have specials virtually every night of the week. And then they have entertainment going on all the time, from trivia contests to karaoke to dancing to some of the best cover bands you'll ever hear on Fridays and Saturday nights. Check them out on Yelp. Check them out on Facebook. Or come on by and say you heard about them on Voice of the Inland Empire. I love it so much here. This is where we're shooting the show. Right here from the bar at Charlie's Stars and Stripes in Old Town Upland. Come on by. Any evening, who knows, you may just see me here having dinner and a drink. We are back and coming to you from one of my favorite places in the world, Charlie's Stars and Stripes in historic Old Town Upland, right on the corner of 2nd and D Street. And uh, you gotta check this place out. I'm here many nights during the week having dinner and a drink and there's always something going on. Karaoke, live music on the weekends, trivia, and more. Today we are joined by Bob Uloa, from Bob's Record Shack in historic Old Town Upland, uh, directly behind Scavenger's Treasures. And Bob, in the first segment, we were talking about the resurgence of vinyl and how vinyl has really a more, a deeper, richer, uh, the, the, the fidelity is, is better, many believe, than the digital sound. Yes. So if I walked into your shop and I'm ready to relive some of my memories, and I remember, <laughs> God, this is dating me. One of my favorite albums was, was uh, uh, Smoke on the Water, Deep oh, Purple. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, and I found that. I would then buy it, and then I'd look at you and go, oh, I don't have anything to play this on. <laughs> so what would you recommend? How does one go about buying? I haven't had a turntable for, you know, 40 years. Well, um, one thing I recommend is um, buying from me. Oh, you sell turntables? Yes, I, I, I buy used turntables, older turntables, you know, from back in the 70s, 80s, and um, I have them refurbished. And then I, I, to, to, um, people don't understand this, when you have a good turntable, you also have to have yourself an amp, stereo receiver, and speakers. And that's how you get the best sound. Well, and that's the old joke. You know, crummy speakers on a good stereo kind of defeats the purpose. Exactly. And that's how you can really enjoy the vinyl at its, at its best. Um, I don't recommend these um, cheap... Um, the imports? The imports from China. Uh, they can damage your, your vinyl. Oh. 
uh, over time. Right. So um, the vintage, the, the vintage equipment is is making a resurgence also. But and now that vintage equipment, I remember in the old days, you had to replace the needle every uh -huh. now and then. Yes. And the needles are still available. And yes. Stuff? Yes. You, you can shop on them on eBay. Um, there's local music stores around here that offer uh, the cartridges. So oh, nice. They're, they're available. Um, uh, I. I, I I think that would be one of the first things you do. One of the first things I do when I get a turntable is replace that. So that when I sell that, I know that, okay, this is good equipment. This has a brand new needle. It's not going to damage the, the, the vinyl. So, you know, if I said, look, you know, I'm not an audiophile, but I do want to listen to the vinyl. I want it to sound reasonably good. What am I looking at spending? I mean, I know I could get a ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 system, and, and I wouldn't. I couldn't. I'd like to, but I can't. Right. Um, but what would a reasonable? Well, you, you know, you can. There's like one of your it, systems, it a be, mid mid range. It could a mid range could be um, anywhere between two hundred up to four hundred. Oh. And that it, what determines that is just the quality of the of the receiver and the um, quality of the speakers. Uh, turntables are pretty much all you know, pretty much in the same ballpark. I mean, if you're, if you're getting a, um, a, a vintage turntable, they're pretty much the same price unless you get into the high-end techniques. And then you're, you know, yeah. then you're, then you're going to spend some money. But I like to keep between two and four because that's affordable for most people. There's, you can spend a lot more than that if you want. I mean, there's some old equipment out there, Macintosh, Marantz, that goes for thousands of dollars. Yeah, I, I actually have a client that produces, their systems are all tubed. And they start at like twenty grand. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. and and they recommend you putting it in its own room, you know, soundproofed. Yeah. yeah. But oh, yeah, it's like you're sitting in a concert hall. Yes. I, I've been in their test room. Yes. It's, it's and awesome. I really personally, and it's the equipment to some degree, but I don't believe that a digital player of any kind, even with those great speakers, could produce the same sound that comes off that vinyl. No. No. I I, I agree with you. <laughs> so 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 that is cool. Now, my other question is, if someone comes to you and they know what they're looking for and say you don't have it, it can you acquire it? Is there a way to do that? Well, I have, I have a list of, of uh, albums and things that I'm looking for for customers currently. So that when I come across it, I give them a call. And I've, I had a customer, um, it was about a year ago, Lemon Festival. I was out front of Scavenger's Treasure selling albums on, on my table. And uh, he was looking for a Rare Earth album, because Rare, Rare Earth is uh, live in concert. And he goes, Bob, I've been looking for this thing for eight years. I never found one. Good luck. I found two. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I found two, so he was very happy. You know, he's very now, happy. something like that, where you've got to go out and search for it, and it's, it's rare. I'm guessing not a dollar. No. No, well, um, it, it doesn't be that expensive either, um, but it's not like I'm... I'm pretty much going out there and looking for that one thing, it just happens to come in with this collection or that collection. And, oh, you know, there's that album that I was looking for. And that's how that happens. Because what I'm thinking here, I invest a couple hundred in a system, and I can go and buy uh, vinyl from you for, say, a buck to ten bucks. That's like cheaper than a CD. I, I'm downloading songs for a dollar twenty cents a piece. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So this is starting to sound like a pretty good value to me. It is. For, for better sound. Yes. For better sound. Exactly. And um, for a better experience too. Um, I, you know, I had I had this friend that he told me, you know, Bob, there's nothing like staying at home on a Friday. Me and the wife, we get our drink, we we put our favorite album on, turn the lights down, and just listen to the music. He goes, we don't have to go anywhere, do anything. We're ha we're having a good time at home, enjoying the music. And I, you know, I go, yeah, that's that's what. Well, that's what a lot of people got away from with this digital, you know, and you, you listen to it on the, on your earphones mm -hmm. and, you know, it's just, you just don't get that kind of a feeling. Yeah. How can a little itty bitty speaker stuffed in your ear? Yeah. You know, yeah. I do that when I'm jogging, but. Right, convenience, right. But, but uh, now if you could figure out how I could strap the turntable on my back while I'm jogging, I, I would do that, you know, just for, for okay, that'd be, maybe a, that'd be a good workout. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, that would be a good workout. So Bob, we're wrapping up here. So one more time. Where are you located, and how can people find you? Okay, I'm in the, I'm in the very back of Scavenger's Treasure. I have an entrance in the back alley, right behind here, Char Charlie's. Um, and also, you can come in through the front. Um, I have my own little area back there. Um, I'm open six days a week, Tuesday through Sunday. I had to think about that. Because I'm, I'm going to start staying open on Mondays with the holidays coming up take advantage of it seven days a week and then after that, I'll take my vacation but uh, um, I'm, I'm there from 12 to 6 
Sometimes later, sometimes earlier, but 12 to 6 is my normal hours. And your Facebook page? My Facebook page is Bob's Record Shack, parentheses group. All right. I have a group page. And do you know, for anyone that's watching or listening, what a great idea for the holidays. Buy that special person a turntable, some vinyl. I guarantee you that'll keep you out of the doghouse for a while. Don't go away. We will be right back. Hi, I'm Ron Stark. Many people know me as the voice of the Inland Empire. And several months ago, I had one of the owners, Nick, on the show talking as an expert about the various options that men have for hair replacement, both surgical, non-surgical, and preventative. And I was so impressed with what he had to say, I decided to take the leap. I'm a little nervous about this because I've had this for a very long time. And I think with Nix and his partner Tuck and some help from their company Dermatex, we may just find a whole new me. Let's go in and check it out. Hey, 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 Nick. Ron, it's really good to see good you to see again. You, yeah, my friend. I gotta tell you, I'm a little nervous about this. I know you are, but there's nothing to be nervous about. I want you to meet my partner, Tuck, who's Tuck. gonna be doing the design. How are you doing for you? Oh. Tell me a lot about you. Uh, I'm excited about yeah. meeting you, and, so we'll and what do we do now? Come on, right? come on in. Right. Okay. Nick, Tuck, I gotta tell you, it was no small feat to get me here. Um, I'm a little nervous about this, but after Nick, you and I had our multiple discussions about this process for my TV show, it really got me thinking. I did my own research, too. Uh, based on our discussions, I looked into the surgical hair replacement, mm -hmm. and, you know, that's... The whole surgery thing is just not for me. Plus, I've had some friends that have done it, and initially they were happy, but over time they kind of became dissatisfied. And you, you guys, you know, Nick had mentioned to me that that's not uncommon. No, but it, it's right for some people. It's not right for others. I've probably spoken to over a thousand people that had transplants previously, um, and they came to us because they just weren't completely satisfied. You know, you know, like I told you, Ron, I started off with hair transplants years ago, and they really worked well for me uh, for four to five years. But as as my area got larger on top and, and, and the donor area got smaller, uh, I realized it wasn't going to be a, a permanent solution. So. And then I know for people that are just starting to lose their hair, you've got a laser therapy that could possibly prevent having to make that decision either way. Well, that, and that's more for somebody in the beginning stages of hair loss, not for somebody with advanced hair loss, but in the beginning. I mean, laser can, can stop the hair loss. and. It can, uh, it can re-energize miniaturized hairs, and it, we, we see great results with it. But it has its limitations. Right. Again, it's, it's for somebody in the beginning, a man or a woman, in the beginning stages of hair loss. So I figured, for me, I had some options. I could just choose to continue to have this big, gaping, bald spot on the top Bad of my head. Bad idea. <laughs> I could go with surgical hair replacement, which doesn't really sound like my cup mm -hmm. of tea. Or I could go with non-surgical hair replacement. Uh, the laser, you know, 10 years ago, maybe that might have helped me, but today um, it might tickle, but it's not going to probably do me a lot of good. Correct, correct. Um, so I made the decision. I'm a little nervous. I'm here. What happens next? Ron, don't be... I know you're nervous and you've thought about this for a long time. I first got involved in this 26 years ago as Nick's client. And then I became owner with him, and uh, so it's kind of changed my life, you know, over time. And uh, you both have, when first time we met Nick, uh, Marco, uh, our videographer and editor, and I had a debate, and we both agreed that he hadn't had the procedure done. And I would have guessed the same about you, but I would be equally as wrong, wouldn't I? Correct, correct. Uh, you know, we, ha uh, we don't want you to be nervous. We have over 60 years' experience between us, so we have some of the most experience of anyone in the country. So you're going to look great, and we're going to get you through your nervousness, and people are going to tell you you look great. Ron, the best thing that I can tell you is there's never been a better time to do this. Uh, the technology is here now. 
Uh, we have clients that, that you can comb your hair back, slick your hair back. I mean, the technology is here. It's like comparing a smartphone with a, with a rotary phone. Um, it, it's a great time to do this. And that's what I see when I looked at your website, dermatexhair.com, and saw so many before and afters. Your ability to match the hair, that I can shower, I can swim, I can have fingers run through my hair. Yeah. It just seems like it's all very natural. Yes. Okay, so what's next? Okay, we're gonna go to the design room. We're gonna match your hair. We're gonna look at density. We're gonna look at the color of your hair, gray percentage, and we wanna match your hair perfectly, age appropriate density. So all right. let's go. All right, let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> Hi, this is Corey Chalmers, host of the hit TV show Hoarders and president of Stericlean Inc. Did you know that 5% of the population suffers from moderate to severe hoarding behaviors? Are you or a loved one overwhelmed with clutter? Let our caring and compassionate specialists support you every step of the way, drama free. Give us a call at 1 800 Hoarders for a free estimate or visit us on the web at hoarders.com. Give us a call at 1 800 Hoarders or visit us at hoarders.com. Charlie's Stars and Stripes in Old Town Upland is one of my favorite places to go for food, for drink, and for great entertainment. Located at 296 2nd Street in Old Town Upland, just north of the gazebo and just east of Euclid Avenue. And now it's time for one of my favorite segments of the show, our community calendar. And let's see what's coming up in and around the Inland Empire. Uh, the Spy Pilot Chronicle, so that sounds interesting, an evening with SR-71 pilot Brian Schull at the San Bernardino International Airport. Often called the most remarkable plane of the 20th century, the Lockheed 7R-71 Blackbird was the world's fastest and highest flying spy plane. Here are first-hand accounts from re Retired Air Force pilot Major Brian Scholl as he reminisces about his most exciting missions. Then on Sunday, November 13th, the Mission Inn run in downtown Riverside. The Mission Inn Foundation presents the 39th annual Mission Inn run with activities for all ages, including a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, and even a kids run, plus live music, health expos, and much more. November 25th through 27th, one of my favorite events, and I am going to be there, Apple Butter Festival at Riley Stone Soup Farm. And I love these guys. They're out in the Oakland region of Yukaipa, and it's a wonderful event. And then in the local live music spotlight, the Natalie Brook duo, November 5th at the Wine Taylor in Rancho Cucamonga. And my favorite, the Kim Martin Band, November 11th, right across the street from where we shoot at J.D. Allison's at 8 p.m. And that is your community calendar. What a great show. I so enjoyed chatting with all of our guests and I especially want to thank you for tuning in and joining us. And please remember to set your DVR so you never miss another episode of Voice of the Inland Empire. Or if you'd like to be able to watch 24-7, check out our website at voiceoftheinlandempire.com where you can see both current and an entire archive of past shows as well. And while you're there, drop us an email. We love to hear from you. What you like about the show, what you don't like about the show. Guest ideas. Guests have to have topics of broad general interest and be non-commercial in nature. Or if you'd prefer the more traditional method, give us a call 909-746-8846. So until next time, this is Ron Stark reminding you to be productive, care for your world and the people around you, work hard, find time for fun, and always remember to give back whatever and whenever you can. Until next time, goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.